What's up YouTube, William Macchio back with another video and in today's video I actually have a good friend of mine, Kevin Rodriguez. Uh, he plays for the Toros FC as a winger forward. So he's going to talk about some of his hardships, you know, all the obstacles he has to go through to become a great player. So please make sure you guys like and subscribe to this video and let's get straight to it. When I was younger, you know, I was always a good player and uh, I started off playing recreational um, and uh, I realized that I had, a, I had a, a good amount of skills so time by time I was going up, moving up in the ranks, first division and I ended up meeting a, a team called the Manchester United Houston team and uh, we were a premier team and that team was a, a big team for me because we, we traveled everywhere, we traveled from from nationals to regionals, all over Texas, all over the U.S., playing against top teams, and I feel like that really helped my development. And uh, as we got older, to like the U15, U14, uh, the Dino Academy was a big thing in Houston, so everyone in Houston wanted to go play for them, even even us, you know. So uh, when I was playing with them, you know, my coaches, we got trials to go play and try out play with the Dino Academy, and only a few of us got uh, in ret like got picked up to go play for them and uh, I was one of them, I was not one of them so that was a big like bummer for me, you know. Like have, playing for the best team in Houston was like a big a big thing for me and me not be, not being able to do that was a uh, a big chip on my shoulder. But um you know my coach was he was real positive, he kept the team making sure we kept playing home games, playing against like good elite talent around the area, around the US. So, you know, I kept my head down, kept working, and uh, as time went on, more and more of my teammates kept, kept, getting, uh, kept going to the academy. And uh, me seeing them do good with the academy, and uh, they began getting college offers, you know. And for me, that's a big thing for me. All I wanted to do was uh, go to college, get a full ride for my parents, you know, so they don't got to pay for anything. They spent so much time uh, taking me to practice from when I was little. In tournaments, they're far away, you know, taking time out of the day, out of their life to help me, like, play soccer, you know. And what's better than me having them, me giving them a full ride offer from a school, you know, so. That was pretty much a big thing for me. Playing high school was, you know, it was good, we had a good team now, but it was an academy, you know. Academy are the ones that get you the offers, and get you looked at, and high school was, wasn't really, like, doing that for me, you know. So my coach just talked to me, you know, we went to some camps, some D3, D2 camps, and I wasn't really familiar with the situation, you know, I didn't know D2 can offer full rides or D3 they offer like big scholarships. So when I was getting some offers from like those those smaller schools, I wasn't really sure like how it was gonna work out for me if I went there, like with financial aid and stuff. So, you know, I told my coaches, you know, I think D1 is like the only thing, like another option for me as well. Like my grades not being that, that well either. I knew I had to go to the academy sooner or later, so that same year, my coaches got me uh, a trial with the academy, and again, you know, I wasn't good enough to make it. You know, they had a really good team. Some of the first team players from Dynamo are in that team right now, so it just shows goes to show how good those teams really were. Kept playing high school. Um, we we're, were doing good, you know, going to state. We we're a good team, you know, but just the offers weren't there. So my last year, junior year, I knew I had to you know, start start picking it up or else, you know, the option is not gonna be there, you know. And uh talked to my coach, you know, he told me, you know, I'll get you one more tryout, you know, but you have to like start making noise and I had to make the, the academy team, you know, so after school, you know, I get ready and get dressed and then they gave me a two week long trial and uh, I ended up starting a little slow 
but I ended up picking it up and on the final day they ended up telling me, you know, talked about it. I was really nervous and they're like, yeah, you know what, we'll take you. We're short on players and we'll, we'll take you. So when I got that when I got that offer, I played Academy. I started off a little slow, you know, um, I didn't play many games. But then in training, uh, I don't know where I started doing really well, you know, going at players, you know, showing my pace. And I ended up starting one of the games and I ended up doing really well. And ever since that, that game, it was like mid-season, I started playing more and more. And I started getting good assists, you know, some goals. And uh, but the problem was, you know, Houston's like a big area. And like I said, there's not many D1 schools, so I still wasn't getting looked at by like some D, some big D1 schools. And uh, I was like starting to lose faith, you know, I was doing good, but there's no one looking at me. So uh, there are some small Juco teams like St. Jack in the Houston area, they offered me. And I've heard that Juco is really good for uh, players who, do, who don't go D1. And um, so that I was gonna go there, you know, play two years, hopefully do well, and then move on to D1 school. So I felt the academy, December hit, and there's a big showcase going on in Florida, and all the top teams go there, and uh, it was filled with scouts, you know. So like me going there and having to play good, that'd have been a big like plus for me. But I ended up getting a concussion, so I couldn't go to that trip. So I couldn't get looked at. So my team ended up going. They played against some big teams, you know, LA Galaxy, Red Bulls, Orlando City. It was a big bone for me not going, but, you know, I kept my head down, kept working. We were one of the best teams in the nation. I think we were ranked the first team in the nation that year. You know, we were doing really well. You know, team chemistry was really well. And um, as the summer hit, we ended up making playoffs. And uh, we were going to Indiana for playoffs. And at the time, only I went offer, you know, Juco, which is San Jack, and I already committed. So we went to Indiana, and there was like another showcase, like a playoff showcase, so to say, and a uh, bunch of teams, you know, all, all the best teams in the nation were there, and there's a thousand coaches, you know, everyone was there, like, I've never seen so many coaches in my life, they're just lined up all around the field, you know, so I ended up doing really well my first game, I had some coaches come up to me, uh, no full rides or anything, but they're interested in me, you know, um, second game, I did probably the best I ever done in my life. I, I bought out that game and uh, I ended up getting an offer from NIU. And this is important because uh, I got lucky. One of their, their full rights uh, German uh, players ended up uh, not going. So they had a full ride for me, full ride available, and uh, they want to give it to me, you know. So not even know where the school was at, where like anything about them. I said yes, you know. Some, some of my teammates were going to that school, so with no hesitation, I just said yes. And I committed right there in Indiana in the hotel. You know, I called my school, my high school, sent all the information they needed to commit, you know. And uh, that was a big plus for me, you know. Ended up signing to NIU that, that same week. And it was good for me, you know, I was excited. My coaching staff from the academy told me if I wanted to go to RGVFC, which was Dan was B team. And, you know, me having the full ride going to college, you know. That's all I would have wanted from my parents. So, you know, I ended up saying, no, I'm gonna go to school. First time being there, you know, I liked it. My teammates were there. So my first year I started, you know, preseason was really good and we started season and I had the best season of my life probably. I had a really good season. I had a lot of assists. I had a few goals. I ended up getting MAC freshman of the year. And the MAC's pretty good conference. You know, we have West Virginia, we have Akron, some some big teams that make it far in the, in the College Cup, so. Having a good year that year and then had me thinking about going pro, you know, like if I can do it at this level, playing against one of the best players in the country, you know, I think I can go a little more and try to go pro. So that's when I realized I want to go pro, like was that freshman year. So sophomore year, it was kind of a down year for us. Our coach got fired, we had a bad season, but junior year was really well for me. We had a good season, but the biggest year was senior year, you know. Going into my senior year, I had to make a lot of noise, you know. I had to put up good numbers if I wanted to go to the MLS, MLS draft, and um, or get any attention from MLS coaches. So I ended up having a really good year my senior year. I had about uh, eight assists and two goals, I believe. And we ended up going far in the, in the college playoffs. So after that year, my coaches talked to me and they're saying there's some offers coming around. Like a lot of MLS teams are interested in me and they want you to go to this combine in Vegas, which is a big thing for college players, you know, not many players get, get called up to that. So me being one of them getting called up was a, was a, a great feeling, you know. So December was uh, when the showcase was in Vegas. I ended up going and uh, 
right when I got there, you know, big time players from big time schools, you know, Michigan, UCLA, all these big schools were there, like, and me being in IU was not really a big school, so it was um, kind of scary at first, but I started playing, doing my thing. Um, I did pretty well. I had some interest from coaches, talked to me, saying that I did really well. Diamond was there, uh, RJV Toros was there as well. Minnesota was there, and Minnesota is one of the teams that were interested in me. And they ended up talking to me a little bit, not really that interested, but they talked to me. So after that ended, I went back home, you know, didn't think much of it. I mean, I just got home and just hoped for the best. So uh, when I was driving up to school in January, go back to the spring for my final semester in school, I got a call from Minnesota and they told me they just drafted me, you know, and, you know, I was, I was shocked, I was surprised, you know, I, I was really happy, but there's one problem. Um, a few weeks before I was going back to school, I was playing, you know, training, just staying fit, getting ready, and I ended up hurting my hip. It was a, I had an injury before in the summer, and I was out for like three months. It was a hip impingement, and, you know, I always had bad hips, my groins, I would have problems with my groins, so whenever I had this and they called me, you know, I was I was happy, but then I was kind of sad because, you know, I was injured, you know, I, I didn't know what was going to happen, so... I was in the car when I talked to Minnesota and I was ecstatic. I didn't bring up the injury yet because I want to talk to my coaches and see what they say about it and what should I do. So my family was calling me, my friends were calling me, you know, telling me like they're, they're happy about it. And then I was talking to them, I was happy too, but in my head I knew the injury was going to be, was going to be there. Like I know it was going to happen. So I called my coaches from school, from NIU. I talked to them, told them what should I do. And they told me just to contact Minnesota and tell them what happened, you know, just be honest. So after I talked to them, while I was on, on the drive back to school, um, I called Minnesota. I told them what happened with my injury, like, do they still want me to go or how does it work? And they told me, you know, like, no, it's fine. Like, come up here, we'll, uh, we'll get you rehab, we'll get you, we'll get you fitting good and get you training already. So I got to school, packed my things, talked to my academic advisors. I didn't finish school, so they told me online was probably the best bet. So I got all that figured out got my online classes and then packing my things and then going to Minnesota. So the season, preseason was about a month. So my first three weeks there, all I pretty much did was just rehab, you know. When I first got there, it was really, really exciting, you know, seeing all these players making like big money. They're really good players from like big teams. And me being there from like, from, from NIU, you know, was kind of intimidating at first. But, you know, as I was doing my rehab, getting everything done, but the problem was I was taking too much time, you know, three weeks was a long time and me being a childless and a draft pick, I had to showcase what I had. So the fourth week we ended up going to Tucson, Arizona for a little preseason games and my hip was still hasn't healed and, um, you know, time was taking, you know, I had to get on the field and show them what I had and um, that last week I ended up getting cleared to play. We had a, a fit day that, that same day I got cleared. I didn't do so well, on the, you know, not being able to play. I had a bad fit fit test day. Um, I was one of the last players and everything. So that really made me look good. Um, towards the last fourth week, the coach talked to me, you know, brought me in his room and he told me, hey, like, you're a good player now, but we didn't really get to see you play at this level. You know, you've been injured, being unlucky and all. So we can't sign you or anything, but we'll keep an eye on you, whatever. And, you know, it was a big disappointment, but I knew it was coming, you know, not being on the field and playing with them. Um, it was a big letdown for me. So after that happened, I called my coaches from the academy, Dynamo Academy, and I told them, can I go to the B team or the first team if possible? And they ended up telling me, yeah, we, we can definitely put you on the B team, but we'll get you a flight right away and we'll get you to the Valley. And so I got back from Minnesota. I went back to school, packed my things. Uh, and I, thought I ended up moving to McAllen, you know, I got a child here, uh, I got here, I did really well, um, I got my, my offer, my contract, I was very ecstatic, you know, my first pro contract for RJVFC was, you know, big for me, you know, I'm just glad when I got there I was healthy, I was able to train, able to play, able to hit the ball, you know, my first year with them was, it was rough at first, you know, um, I was getting much playing time at first, but as time went by, um, I got more confidence, I got some good goals, some assists, and uh, ended up doing really good. Towards the end of the season, I did really well. 
and at the end, Dynamo told me they uh, they want to re-sign me again for a second year. So that was a big, you know, happy about that. You know, they have interest in me. So the goal now was, you know, just to go to the B team and hopefully get signed to the first team. It gave me hope that they can possibly sign me. So, you know, I stayed here. And right now I'm doing my second year with the RJVFC, you know. And hopefully, you know, I can do good enough and then one day I can go with the first team. All right, guys. Now here I have a few questions to ask Kevin. And hopefully you guys can, you know, learn something from these questions and learn from his advice. So the first question is, is the pro-life hard? Like, Yeah, I think it's pretty hard, you know. Jumping from college to pro is a, a big jump, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone's really good, you know. Everyone's on the same level. You might have been really good in college, like one of the best players, but mm -hmm. going to the pros, these guys were all the best players in their team as well, so okay. you got to take that into consideration. Yeah. And how much do you train as a professional athlete? We train a bunch. We train every day, mm -hmm. about two hours a day, and uh, we take it live before game days, but mm -hmm. overall we train for a good amount. We mm -hmm. do gym sometimes as well. Yeah. Do you also uh, train on your own? Yeah, I do a lot of finishing after practice, you know. Mm -hmm. So everyone's always busy doing things, you know, getting their body right. Yeah. Um, I know doing a lot of weights as well this season, preseason, mm -hmm. get my, my, my mass up, you know, get faster, stronger, bigger, obviously. Okay. How important is it to you to trust the process, you know, and get through obstacles? I think it's I think it's tough, you know, you gotta be mentally mentally strong. There's yeah. some time where you might not get rostered or, or play well and you know you gotta push through it, you know. Mm -hmm. You're good enough to play in here, so you gotta, you know, believe in yourself and um, that was a big thing for me, you know. At first I wasn't playing much, but once yeah. you get that confidence, mm -hmm. I feel like you just believe in yourself and just do your thing and things will go go your way. Awesome. So what are some important advice that you can tell young players? Uh, something I can tell you guys is just, you know, work hard, you know, don't take no for an answer, you know, always like believe in yourself, you know, and uh, just work hard keep your head down, work hard and you'll get your chance to get your opportunities sooner or later. Awesome. Okay, and this one's a little personal one because I think I'm goaded in this. So how good are you at two touch? Because I don't lose. Mm. I'm yeah. pretty confident in my future, you know. I played that every day in college before <laughs> yeah. practice, so and I was always the best one in my team. Stop so. the cap. A bit of good, a bit of good game. Bro. Okay, I'm maybe we'll maybe have to see some two touch later on. But anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much, Kevin, for you know having me here and sharing your story with everybody. It really means a lot, and hopefully you guys can actually learn something from you know all these stories that I put out on this YouTube channel, just to see different perspectives, different lifestyles, and understand that you know the pro game isn't isn't easy whatsoever. It's hard, but you gotta be able to put in the hard work so you can achieve your dreams. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and make sure you guys are staying determined, driven, and disciplined in your goals every single day. Thanks, bro. Peace out.